Let's talk about gauge pressure. Uh, gauge pressure is pressure as measured by a gauge. And the thing you need to know is that most pressure gauges compare the pressure they're reading to atmospheric pressure. So if they read zero, that just means it's zero more or less than an atmosphere. If it reads a positive number, that means it's more than an atmosphere. And if a gauge reads negative pressure, then it means that the pressure it's reading is less than an atmosphere, right? So the room that we're in most likely is at zero gauge pressure. That is, it's at one atmosphere more or less, right? Um, and the absolute pressure, and this is what we have to put into the ideal gas law. This is our absolute pressure right there, okay? Is always one atmosphere more than the gauge pressure, okay? So, and then you also need to know what an atmosphere is in all of those units, right? Okay. So let me just give you a for example here, right? If we're, if we're going to talk about absolute pressure, which is, by the way, the real pressure, okay? And then we're going to compare that to gauge, right? Remember that gauge means how much more than an atmosphere. Okay, it's how much more than an atmosphere that you have, right? So let's just, this is pretty easy, right? Let's suppose I've got a gauge pressure of uh, zero atmospheres, right? That means that the absolute pressure is one atmosphere. And that's because you said it's zero more than an atmosphere, so there you go, it's one atmosphere, right? Okay, if you have a gauge pressure of uh, two atmospheres, the real pressure, the absolute pressure is three atmospheres. So that's pretty easy. If you're in atmospheres, it's pretty easy, right? What if it's, um, what if your gauge pressure, you inflate the tires of your car to 32 PSI? Well, that's, this is like higher math, right? That means it's 32 PSI more than an atmosphere. And an atmosphere is 14.7, right? So 32 plus 14.7, this is higher math, right? It's, uh, is that right? Yeah, it's 46.7, right? Uh, uh, PSI, right? Okay, so you add, this is what we're doing, is we're adding an atmosphere to the gauge pressure to get the absolute pressure, right? Okay, what if I've got um, a gauge pressure of, uh, what, what if I've got an um, absolute pressure of, um, of uh, uh, 20 PSI, right? What would be the gauge pressure? Well, how much more than an atmosphere is 20 PSI? Well, 20 minus, this is like higher math, I can't do it in my head, right? 20 minus 14.7 uh, is 5.3 more than, right? Right, so that's your gauge pressure. It's 5.3 more than 14.7, so that's the gauge pressure, okay? What you need to know is that, that in the world, almost all pressures that people give you are gauge pressures when you're doing calculations with pressure, you almost always want absolute pressure. There are some exceptions, but you know, there we have it, right? Let's do, let's do an example here. Okay, so uh, what's the absolute pressure in Tor and Pascal if you have a gauge pressure of 312 Tor? So what we're saying, when we say it's a gauge pressure of 312 Tor, it's 312 more than an atmosphere. So one atmosphere in Tor is 760 Tor, right? This pressure is 312 more than that, right? Yeah? Right, so that is your, that's Tor, that's your absolute. And then of course, uh, we wanna turn the answer into Pascals, which is easy. We go 1072 Tor, right, divided by 760 Tor, Per atmosphere, all right? And then uh, what do we do? We multiply that. We want to turn it to Pascal, so that's 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. So this is a, this is how many atmospheres it is multiplied by this is uh, Pascal's per atmosphere, right? Okay, so 1,072 divided by 760 multiplied by 1.013 e to the fifth. And my number is one, it's a lot, a very lot of numbers. 142, 886.3. Okay, so let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. So 1.43 times 10 to the fifth pascals. 
you.